Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we remove two eastern yellow jacket ground nests from the base of a small cherry tree on September 16th of 2023. The nests were located only a couple feet from each other on opposite sides of the tree, and the homeowners had contacted us after they were stung while mowing the lawn near the tree. So these aggressive nests had to go. We collected the adult wasps for venom immunotherapy, or VIT, where they can be utilized to help people with lethal venom allergies. We captured the queens for both nests. You can see one of them here in the nest cavity that was dug out. And you see another one of them here against one of the worker wasps. So you can see the difference in size here. It's pretty obvious when you find a queen because she's so much larger than the little workers. We then relocated the brood combs from the nest to our outdoor vespiary where the larva can be incubated until the end of pupation. And at that time, they can be collected for VIT as adult wasps. We then treat the area with a non-toxic essential oil to block their pheromones so they don't return and rebuild the nest here. And then we hide one of the vacuum devices above the old location of the hole of the nest. And therefore, any of the foragers that return get sucked up into the vacuum tube. As always, thanks for riding along with us. Enjoy the show. And please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment to let us know you're there. So let's take you back to September 16th, 2023. What you see here is the nest cavity that we dug out on the first nest. Unfortunately, due to a camera malfunction, we could not get footage of the actual dig out of this first nest or collecting most of the adult wasps on nest number one. We do have footage of the actual comb that we dug out. We'll show you that in just a minute. Also, for the second nest, we have the entire dig out, all the adult collection, all the digging out of the nest, the whole process. The second nest dig out starts at about the eight minute mark on this timeline. But for the first seven minutes of this video, we're going to focus on the first nest cavity space. And we're going to show you how you run down an extra tunnel in a nest just to make sure it's clear of the queen or any other wasp that might try to reestablish a nest, even though you take out the rest of the comb. If the queen runs back there, they're just going to keep rebuilding a new nest. So just be aware, it's crucial to check the entire nest cavity for additional tunnels or additional cavities leading out of that space into some other further underground areas. And if you don't check those, uh, you may have to go back again in the near future if they reestablish a nest there, which they can do very rapidly because there's still a lot of foragers out in the environment and when they come back to this area they'll just pick up where they left off they'll find the queen and keep going so this footage just shows you how we look around and how we discover another hole back there and we dig it out and then we treat the whole area with essential oil spray and fill in the hole but we just wanted to mention that to you because it's important to know about you might find a cavity but you might find a lot of smaller cavities and tunnels off the main cavity sometimes so we're going to speed up the footage here on fast forward to 20 times its actual speed and just kind of show you how we fill in this hole and treat it. So initially here, you're just going to see us following the tunnel we found in the back of this cavity. It was about the size of a golf ball, the, the width of a golf ball, this tunnel. And we just dug it out further and further. And the further back it went, the more wasps we found in there. But we did not find the queen in there. We ultimately found the queen in the nest that we had removed. But at this point, we just wanted to double check there wasn't another queen or more queens. Because at the end of the season here, there may be more than one queen in a nest. You just want to run them all down. So that's what we did here. So you can see a couple of wasps that we dug out of that tunnel. They had been in there working and digging. So these have to be cleared and collected. And we use the scope cam here just to get a little visual inside the tunnel. Make sure there's nothing in there we're missing. So we don't see any more activity down in the hole they were digging so we're going to treat the area now with essential oil and hopefully they won't rebuild all right i don't feel any more holes or tunnels down there
Still one more on me. The diehards. They'll just keep trying to get you. All right, so we just refilled the hole, raked up the area. Hopefully that'll take care of it. I don't see any sign of any more except the random forager coming back here and there. So once we refilled the hole, we went back to the comb that we collected from this nest and we started vacuuming off any of the wasps inside that comb. Mostly these were those that had pupated out over the last few minutes or some that were adults that were collected while we put this nest into the container when we pulled it out of the ground. And for venom immunotherapy purposes, we collect every single adult we can find on a nest. And it's important to get, especially the females. The males you see in this video, they'll be separated out because they don't have stingers, so they don't have venom sacs. So they're not useful for venom immunotherapy collection. But the females that are on this nest, we definitely want to get all of those. And during this process, we're always on the lookout for the queen as well, it's just in case she turns up in one of the combs. Hey, we lucked out. We found the queen. This is her right there. You can see how she compares to the size of the workers. So we got the queen after all. That's great news. All right, so that's enough of this one. So at this point, we're just collecting the last of the foragers with the disguised vacuum. You see how they explore the whole area where they used to have a nest and they just keep getting sucked up there. So we'll run this back for about an hour and collect all the forages as they come in. So I can hear them buzzing around me still. The hole's way over there, but they're still interested in landing on me. We just found a second nest on the other side of the cherry tree right here. So now we're going to start working on this one. So in this clip you can see we set up the vacuum outside the main entry hole and dozens and dozens of foragers were just flying back into the hole as, after they'd been out hunting and foraging for protein for the larva or for building material for the nest or out for nectar on their own. Uh, just tons of them coming back in getting sucked up immediately as they tried to enter the nest. And it's important to note here as you see so many of these out in the environment coming back you have to understand that each one of these wasps that's out hunting is knocking down dozens and dozens of pest insects in the environment. Their main job in the world, globally, wasps, is to do biological pest control. It's crucial that if you have a nest that you find in a place that's not dangerous to people, it's not near where you're going to lawn mow, it's not near your kid's play yard, whatever, 
leave it where it is because these are super beneficial insects and as you can see here they just keep coming back in and every one of them has a mouthful of meat that they have killed in the wild and brought back for their larvae to feed on and those are all pest insects and without these wasps those pest insects would explode for population and we don't want to see that sorry about the crazy camera work here but uh, sometimes we certainly wish there was more than two hands on every human but we're trying to film and vacuum and not get stung all at the same time so uh, forgive the wildness of some of these clips but the idea here is you just keep vacuuming until you get as many out of the nest hole as possible and then when they start slowing down that's when it becomes more safe and more efficient to dig out the nest comb underneath and continue with the removal. But first you want to get that swarm down. Many reasons for that. One is we're there to remove wasps for this client and if we leave a whole bunch of them out foraging flying around uh, that's, that's just poor service. Number two, for safety. They've already been stung at this property and we do not want a swarm going crazy on this property all around this cherry tree. We want them completely controlled and sucking them up as they come out of the nest, as they come back to the nest. And the more we spend time doing that before we dig, the more efficient we can control all of these hundreds of wasps that are pouring out of here trying to kill us, basically. <laughs> so what we keep doing here is called stomping them out. You want to just keep stomping around the nest to stir them up. The noise, the vibration, it makes them have a defensive reaction instinctually, and they just come pouring out of the nest every time you jump around outside the nest and stomp on the ground, whatever, bang it with a tool or bang it with your hand. You see them here landing on the equipment, trying to sting it, trying to sting us. That's what we want. We want a defensive, uh, panic, quick reaction from the wasps, because that's what's bringing them out of the hole. Eventually, no matter how much noise and vibration you make, uh, they just stop coming out. Most of the guard wasps and the foragers are gone, leaving mostly males and the queen and some newer pupating wasps who have just been born on the nest inside. There's fewer and fewer attack wasps to deal with, and once we see that, it's time to dig. It'll slow down to maybe one or two wasps every minute or two, as opposed to dozens pouring out of there all at the same time. And then we know it's time to proceed. In the meantime, sometimes we'll just stop for a few, take a break, and let the equipment do the work where a lot of the foragers are coming back from the wild. Um, you see here that situation where a lot of the foragers are still trying to come into the nest. We've opened up the hole a little bit, dug just a little bit out, uh, and that stirs them up again. And so we leave the vacuum there for a minute, just let them get sucked up there. It saves a lot of hassle and reduces the swarm quite a bit. After a while, it's time to dig. So we pick up a shovel while the vacuum is still running and we dig kind of around the basic area where we think the nest is going to be. And you can never really tell exactly where it is unless you scope cam it out to the point where you get lucky. You can actually see what direction you're digging in. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But generally, it's going to be within a foot or so of that entry hole. And it'll be within 0 to 18 inches under the ground. And you never know quite what the depth will be. So you have to be careful when you dig if you're trying to get the nest in, intact. But as you see here, uh, once you start the dig, uh, the wasps become a little bit confused about where their house is. So you can leave the hole alone and dig around it, or you can just dig straight through and uh, try to get it done quickly. And that's what we're doing here. We had spent quite a while um, working on sucking up the wasps, so we decided to just start digging and going for it. And we had a good idea it was probably you know under this fence line where the cherry tree had been uh, protected from animals and deer so we just started going in the direction that we kind of instinctually felt the nest was going to be and sure enough we find it here and what we're looking for here when you dig out a cavity space like this is you're looking for the small tunnel and you want to continue digging wherever you find that tunnel and you bang around the outside of this dig hole, and sure enough, you see them start pouring out of the top of this dig space. That's where the tunnel is. So we suck up a few from right there, and then we continue to dig at that tunnel space, going further back and further back until we eventually find the nest. And as you can see here, as the dig progresses, we wear hearing protection. 
and that is because the noise from these vacuums is pretty intense, especially if you do a long couple of removals or you're working for a long day from removal to removal. It's really important to use PPE, not just a bee suit to protect your body from stings, but protect your ears if you're around noise. It's just not worth the ear damage in the long term. Here's a mess. You can see the white paper in there. This is the cavity. You see that hole right there? This is where the second nest is going to be. You see the cavity opening up? You can see all the paper in there. That's the nest right there. Where you see some of the comb already. It's tough to get to because we're trying to get through this. They build it in a great spot because it's protected from animals basically because the animals can't get full access because of the wire. Very awkward place to work because you can't get through the fence, but we'll get it. We got just enough access to get to it. So just like with the first nest, and we apologize for the crazy camera work here. On this particular day, uh, we were between tripods, which is often the case because the tripods just take a beating in the field and eventually they just break and then you have to order a couple more and on this particular day we were just waiting for the new ones to arrive trying to dig with one hand and film with the other a little awkward See how deep it goes. There it is. Now we got to find the queen. The main concern on these nests is always trying to locate the queen. Here you see quite a number of male wasps. Those are the ones with the longer bodies and the longer floppy looking antenna. And they have an extra body segment. They have no stinger. In late summer, early fall, there's a lot of males because that's when the nest begins to produce reproductives. I don't see her yet. dump the nest in. So here we're continuing the search for the queen from nest number two and we take the comb and we put it inside the bin where we store all the comb and sometimes she'll turn up in there sometimes she won't. In this case she didn't so we went back to the nest cavity space and began to look again in there. Once you take the bulk of the nest out of the cavity space, then you can just really take handfuls of dirt. We always use double gloves for this because they will sting through a single bee glove a lot of the time. And you start sifting through that dirt handful by handful until you can find the queen. Now in this sequence, the queen appears a couple of times. Uh, we initially missed her with a couple of the sift out handfuls, but eventually we find her. See if you can spot her a couple of times here. There she is. 
That's the queen, right there. You see her? Right here. Come here, mama. All right, that's our girl. Here we're gonna freeze the frame just a minute so you can get a look at the size difference between the queen on the right and the male on the left. And if you look at the male's body, he has more segments on his abdomen than the female does, even though she's bigger and he has a longer antenna. And best of all, he has no stinger. So once we know we have the queen, everybody kind of has a sigh of relief on our team anyway, whenever we capture the queen in the field, because that way we really know for certain that that nest is not gonna rebuild with the same queen and whatever foragers we miss. So it's always nice to get her, get all the comb out, vacuum up as many of the wasps as you can, whether or not they're male or female, because at the end of the day, the client doesn't know the difference between a male wasp and a female wasp. They just want all of the wasps gone. So we get all of them. We don't leave anything behind that we can help anyway. A lot of males in here. We got two nests in here today. A lot of queen combs, so they're getting ready to make reproductives. Here you see the size of the cavity they dug out. They dug all of that, I didn't dig any of it. Hardly. So most of the wasps we're digging up and sifting out and collecting here are males, so they're not included in VIT batches uh, that we use for venom immunotherapy. You just gotta keep scooping them out and sifting through the dirt. Get them all out of there. A lot of these are males. You can tell because they have super long antenna and they have longer bodies. They don't have stingers. That's why I like working with males because there's no stingers. Now that we have most of it collected, we're gonna treat the cavity space with peppermint oil, essential oil, non-toxic. But it'll act as a deterrent so they won't try to rebuild there. My spray mechanism broke on this thing. I don't usually use these. I like to use regular spray bottles, but this thing busted. So I'm gonna have to just dump it in there. Got some in this bucket, so we'll start with that. You see how we fill it with oil? That'll saturate it pretty well. And that'll kill whatever else is in there and make it impossible for them to dig further down.
So now we disguise the hole a little bit. And as they go in looking for their nest, they'll get sucked up. So we always spend the time after the job, you just have to put in the work to collect the last of the foragers as they're returning to the nest because there's hundreds of them out of the nest at any given time out foraging for food and for nest building materials. So just like we did in the first nest in this video, here in the second nest, we disguise the whole vacuum so that just the tube of the vacuum is visible and it looks like a dark hole. They'll come and explore that hole because it's near where their hole used to be. And when they do that, they get sucked up. It takes some time, but it's always worth the effort. It just reduces the population left over when we leave the job site. And that makes the job that much more complete, that much more professional. And the client can rest easy because they're not surrounded by a bunch of homeless wasps for the next two days, which eventually die off without their nest. But it's, it's still disconcerting to see if you have asked us to remove it. They don't want to see a bunch of wasps left over. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for riding along with us. As always, we appreciate the support that the YouTube community has shown us. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment to let us know you're there. See you on the next one. Have a good one.